seen Avery before when we do come in this area. And he's off to another great start here. He's made top eights at the Open Series before, and he's in line to maybe do so again here with the Tarka Red. Uh, what's important to find out is who's going to play first here, and it will be Hawkins with the Lanham Oasis. We are underway here in round number 11 for Avery. It's important to have one drop. He looks like he does. It's always interesting to me just to see how Magic has come around. Traditionally, I would think if you're playling a mono red deck against a green red, a green white aggro deck, it's like, oh, that's historically been a tough matchup. But you know, you and I were looking at the deck list and said, that may not even be true here. Um, while uh, Hawkins has creatures that are low to the ground, they aren't particularly threatening in terms of like life link or huge numbers on them. So I actually at least game one like a Tarka Red here. That's how it's going to be hard. Avery's on a five card hand. Yeah, being on a five card hand is pretty difficult uh, to be sure. And you know, it's not entirely sure what he's up against probably. That said, we'll see what he can put together here as he's going to play a Temple of Abandon just a one of in his deck list. Little scry action here. That top card's going to go to the bottom. Now, in order to make his Green White Company into an Obzon Company deck, Eric paid a big price in terms of his mana. And you can see it right now, Lanor Waste and Mana Confluence is the two lands. That is very real against something like the red deck. Absolutely it is. Very, very painful mana base here for Hawkins. Also, no play on turn one or turn two. It's Ooh. even going to get more oh, painful. Oh, my gosh. Wrong matchup for double Mana Confluence. Now, Bermass is a pretty good card against the red deck, as Hawkins is going to go down to 16. But if Williams is a card like Stoke the Flames here, this could get out of hand really fast. Yeah, this is one of those situations that if, if Avery was on a seven card hand, I would just say, I think this is, Hawkins is taking too much damage for this to work. Now, because Avery's on five, his follow-ups may not be as well constructed as he wants them to be. So like you said, Bramaz may actually just be enough here, but Hawkins needs some lands that needs to get rid of his own personal mana barbs. Yeah, he's, he's having some real issues here, to say the least. He needs to draw Urborg. That just fix it. Fix everything. Typically does. Typically does fix quite a few things for these decks. William's going to take a look at his hand again on a mulligan of five. He's got a Swift Spear and a Berserker in play. Looks like Berserker may head into the red zone here. He's just going to play a Dragon Fodder so far. So two Goblin tokens. And in situations like this, sometimes it is appropriate just to try to go as wide as you possibly can to set up a large Atarkas command. Yeah, I believe that's what he is setting up for. Because in that turn, he could have just attacked with, light, with Lightning Berserker, dumped all of his mana Lightning Berserker, kill Bermaz, then there'd be a 1-2 left behind. Then again, you know, there's no guarantee that Bermaz is going to block that particular turn either, as now Bermaz is going to come into the red Water. zone. The token will be blocked by Swiss Beer, given that it is a 1-2. And the King of Oresco is going to come through here. Looks like maybe Hawkins has a spell to play, however. I think he's going to Dromoka's Command here. Okay. It's going to be a painful one, just like everything else that he's Every, doing. He, he just has Banna Barbs in play. Yeah. Until he draws an Urborg or something, he you have to look at the game from Hawkins' standpoint of you get about three spells this game. So one was Bermaz, two is Remokes Command. I think he, he can afford to cast one more. That's a, This is a huge turn for Hawkins. This is a, this is a really good Remokes Command. So Bermaz will fight down Lightning Berserker. The 1-1 one, one cat will, token will get a counter, so it wins the fight over Swift Spear. It, it took him two life to do it, but taking care of two creatures, that was a pretty good one for Hawkins. Hawkins going to sacrifice a Wooded Foothills. Yeah, no fourth line for Hawkins on his turn. We go back over to Avery. Looks like Hawkins has a Death Mist Raptor. I know an Anafenza in his hand. Nothing he can really cast. Now, Raptor can be cast face down off that Lanor Wastes, so the Lanor Wastes doesn't have to hurt him. But Mana Confluence, that does damage whether you're making colored or colorless. It's bad news either way, especially against a red deck. That said, Eric has a pretty healthy life total right now at 14. I mean, just not a very explosive start given that Williams... You know, just on a mulligan to five, playing a pretty honest game at this point. We might see a Hordling Outburst here. It's not clear that Williams can beat just Bramaz by itself right now. I think it's going to be hard. And if that's true, then it doesn't matter that Hawkins' lands are all horrible. I mean, this entire game, it seems like to me, Avery Williams is just setting up as large of an Atarkas command as he can. All There's right, basic. Yeah. <laughs> Got there. Basic, painless land. What a delight. An attack, an attack with everything, including a brand new cat token. Zergo is going to get in front of the only one that it can block, which is the 1-1. One, one. Zergo is kind of cowardly when it comes to blocking. Yeah, it's, only, it's a little embarrassing. He only, what a bully, he only picks fights that he can win. It's correct. I can kind of respect it, I guess. Why would you want to have a fight that you can't win? 
Hawkins is debating using OBS on Charm here, I believe. Yeah, he does have a copy of OBS on Charm in hand. Could dish out some counters. Use that common bond mode, as you mentioned. And two counters. Yeah, I, you know, I like that. What is this? Is the, the Brahmaz plus combat tricks strategy? I think he's just going to put two counters on the guy that Zergo's blocking. Just keep his board clear. I mean, it's, it's at the yeah. expense of life, but you also get to keep your tokens around. They do have vigilance to block, so they're very, very useful. It's the big, just swing at him with this wall of creatures. This is. This is not how the deck normally plays, but this is very impressive. This is new-ish. Don't see this very often. I'm not sure Avery's going to beat it. Uh, I, I would be surprised if he's able to beat this. Well, and everything he's trying yeah. to do is, is around a Tarkus command, and he just keeps losing creatures. I mean, I'm not saying his blocks are incorrect. I would. I think everyone would make the same blocks. Yeah, you can't just let Hawkins get free one ones. Yeah. That doesn't work either. He has a copy of Lightning Strike. It looks like. Well, any strike might have to go upstairs. You can see he's a little frustrated. It's, a, it's certainly a weird game at this point. Basic swamp from Hawkins. Wow, he is they, doing Yeah. Well. More vigilance. Here comes the wall. The cat wall swings in. This is a very interesting game because if you're the mono red player or the Atarka red player, excuse me, this is kind of how you want your opponent to draw every game. Like, <laughs> which is just like, you know, you've drawn three pain lands, you've drawn two mana confluences, but Avery's on a mulligan to five, and he was on the draw, so things did not line up great. It's actually a basic forest, now there's a morph. I love the play there. Finally, now that he hit two non-mana confluence lands, Hawkins is taking great care to not hurt himself anymore. I think lightning strikes going upstairs. Can't imagine it's going at a creature, but uh, Avery's at two. I, I don't... He is not close to 12 to nine more damage. No. The Tarkus Command plan has gotten blown up. All you can do is pass the turn back. Just more Vigilance cats. Yeah, Hawkins is just this, charges his shoulders, draws his card, charges his shoulders, and says, e everybody in. I don't have to tap any more mana this game. Yeah, that's going to do it. So Eric Hawkins is going to win game number one here over Avery Williams. Anzac Company All is right. up a game here over Tarka Red. Strange game, but... I, I do like the way it played out for Hawkins. It looked dangerous for a while, and I think, as you mentioned, one card, one Stoke the Flames would just blow that out of the that water. That game's basically over. If there's a Stoke on Bermaz, that game's simply over. Now, what I'm wondering is if Avery has the Lightning Strike earlier, if he had an opportunity to suicide a creature into Bermaz and Lightning Strike down Bermaz, I mean, is that something he's even in, he's interested in at that point? Uh, yes, because Bermaz is just a pain to try to get through. Uh, I, I think that's a a plan that could have maybe won him the game, or that turn where he thought about attacking with Lightning Berserker and just dumping all of his mana and trading with Bramaz, something I may have an interest in too, depending on the content of his hand. Yeah, I, well, I don't think Hawkins can make that block. He just can't afford to lose Bramaz. I don't think so either. I think if Avery attacks with Lightning Berserker, Eric's just going to say, okay, no blocks. How much are you going to pump? The answer is probably one for yeah. Avery. Yeah, I and mean, I guess if Eric ends the game at nine, uh, so okay, so maybe with more aggressive attacks, Avery gets... Hawkins down to five, but yeah. five isn't zero. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's able to win that game. As we take a look at the sideboards, we will start with Avery and his additional copy of Goblin Rabble Master, four copies of Rose to Hall of Triumph, a Destructive Revelry, four Eidolon of the Great Revel, two Goblin Heel Cutters, a Scouring Sands, and a copy of Arc Lightning. Uh, I want the additional copy of Rabble Master, four copies of Rose to Automatic. Um, both the copies of Heel Cutter are quite nice in this matchup. And given that he's on the play, uh, I would want actually the copies of Eidolon of the Great Revel as well. Also, just because Hawkins' deck is low enough to the ground that you figure it's worth some damage. Yeah, I mean, you are open to Dromoka's command by doing that. You certainly are open to Dromoka's, you are certainly open to Dromoka's command by boarding an Eidolon, but you're also playing its Collected Company deck. Collected Company implies that he's playing a lot of spells that are three mana or less, and you're on the play where Eidolon is at its best. So you know, if he's on the draw, I probably wouldn't want Eidolon, but so given that he's on the play, I would want them. Now, do you think he knows he's against a company deck? If I were to play that one, I would I would assume I'm against Obzon Megamorph. I guess Bermaz is weird in a Megamorph deck, but I'm not I'm not Positive, I know that Collective Company's in the deck. I mean, everything I've seen, given, if I'm Avery, everything that I've seen watching that game leads me to believe that a lot of his spells are three or less mana, and I'm on the play. If I'm on the draw, I don't want Eidolon, actually. Yeah, I, I, just, I just want Dragon Fodders. But if I'm on the play, I just want Eidolons and try to run you out of the gym and get ready for game three. All right, well, on Hawkins' side and sideboard, I'm going to give you a situation which is pretty interesting. How many times have you seen a Collected Company hit two Hornet's Nests against Tartarka Red? Uh, zero, and I hope that trend continues. Well, it could happen this game. So if you look at Hawkins' sideboard, he has a pair of Hornets Nests to company into. Those seem great. Imagine he's going to board those ones in. Um, outside of that, he has some cheap removal. He has two copies of Ultimate Price that he can use here. Uh, that's 
that's fine against a Tarka Red. A lot of his stuff is expensive, and I don't know how much outside of the ultimate price in Hornet Nests he uses. He has a copy of Mastery of the Unseen. I guess in theory that can gain man gain life, but that's very slow against a red deck. It's really, really slow. Uh, I, I still think you wore it in. Like if, you, if you're going to change your deck and you have the spot to bring it in, I would want to bring it in, but it is pretty slow. Yeah, there are some, some interesting parts. Uh, Hawkins has two copies of Hidden Dragon Slayer in its main deck, and actually just a 2-1 lifelink with no other abilities it seems reasonable against a Tarka Red. Keep it in. Yeah. Definitely keep it in. I mean, it's not exciting, but it's good enough, so I would definitely keep that card in. And then still my favorite part, he still has the two Siege Rhinos. Yeah, I would want two more the of those. Or two fewer. It's possible that you just don't want any. I, I want them all. I'm playing Obstant, I want them all. Right. I'm just saying. It's just, I'm just saying talk to your friend. Two, oh, 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 yeah. No, talk we to know. Eric. Tell we him know. two he more knows. Rhinos. You know. uh, very quickly, we will talk about the Star City Games YouTube page uh, where you can find Versus series, you can find the archives of our Premium Versus series and, and our Magic Online videos, Open Series archives, so if you want to go back and watch this tournament, the Open Series in Portland, our Invitationals, the Players' Championship, as well as unboxings and other unique content, youtube.com slash Star City Games video for more information. Keep in mind that some of the things that we post on our YouTube page we don't actually post on our website, like unboxings, so you can find out more information at youtube.com slash Star City Games dot Star City Games video, excuse me, today as we do get ready for our next game here between Atarka Red and Abzan and Company. Eric Hawkins, again a player from Minnesota that you know, he made the drive here with his friend Matthew Tickle. 20 hours. Tickle not in day two. He's playing in a side of him. Did you get him to play Amulet? No, he's not playing Amulet of Vigor. You couldn't no. you couldn't get him to no. do it. It's on Soul Tie in Modern. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Gerard Fabiano version. Fair enough. Everyone's afraid to play the Amulet no, Bloom No, the deck. Amulet Bloom deck is still in my bag. I, Anyone who asked, I made that offer to. No takers. No takers. Everyone's a coward. I did find another guy we talked to who's playing it in Modern Okay. Right now. Yeah. All right. We'll keep our eyes out. Uh, but for Eric Hawkins, he's, cool. he's making a deep run into day two. Uh, certainly the drive has been worth it. He's up a game right now against an Atarka Red deck. So let's see if he can keep it going. Yeah. Actually, I actually have, have some new tech for the Amulet deck, which is sweet too. New tech, huh? Yeah. You, well, you like get a new card for that deck once every two years. It's, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. We Dragon Lord Dramoka in the sideboard. All right, that card's probably pretty good, actually. You can pack for it. And if you ever play one of those against a Delver deck in Modern, it's hilarious. Well, they can't oh, they can't counter it or kill it, probably. Right, right. Well, well, and if it's it. in play, then, then the Primeval Titan you're going to make next turn, that guy can't be countered either. That's true. Okay. It's, like, it's pretty reasonable. All right, I can actually get behind that. I can actually get behind that. They have to have a Vapor Snag for it, I guess, or they're just dead immediately. Right. Okay. And then you do it again next turn. Sure. It's like, yeah, you know, you really don't get one card every two years or something because it's... You know, it's it's like it's like dredge. How often does dredge, legacy dredge get a new card? It's like never. Basically never. Yeah. Which is a good thing because that deck is lame. Here's a Zergo to start things off. A forest from Hawkins and a passing of the turn. Here's an attack for two. Let's see what the follow will be. It'll be a temple. Here's hoping for Avery. He's got another play. He does not. He's just gonna pass the turn back. Hawkins will draw. Basics. Lots of basics. That's good. And this is a reason that I am a very anti-Zergo against Obzon decks. Well, he it was good for two damage, and I'm no no. Now it's gonna need some help. Yeah, I don't I don't really prefer to sleep up shocks against the Obzon deck. Basically, if you're boarding out Wild Slash against a deck, which you are oftentimes doing then you don't want Zergo in your deck because you have to kill every creature that they play now. Like with Foundry Denizen, at the very least you get to trade with something and then with Eidolon, it has a passive effect. But Zergo is going to get outclassed by every single creature that is played. So when you have Swift Spirit, like you can beat a card like Bermaz in combat or Fleece Main Lion. Same thing can be said with Foundry Denizen where you play a Dragon Fighter or Horling Outburst and trade with their guy, which you're absolutely thrilled with because you're getting a better creature off the table. As it stands right now, Zergo is in hand and in play. Avery has another Zergo in hand. So D Zergo is on diminishing returns anyway. Like, the second one's never going to do anything now because why would Eric ever kill the first one? Yeah, and Avery bottlenecked up a bit there. On turn two, he had to choose between lightning striking the, the Fleece Main Lion and playing one of his two copies of Eidolon of the Great Revel. He did take down the Lion, but then Eric had a turn three Bramaz. No land from Avery main meant that he had to play Eidolon into this Bramaz, and that's a tricky spot for him. Let's get that Zergo in front of that kitty cat token. Maybe. I wonder, I wonder if he's having flashbacks, though, of last game. What happens when he starts doing that? Oh, he's got another Zergo, so let that one just bite the dust. I'm surprised no block here. No, he's just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really am. 
does have a Stoke the Flames in hand, so maybe he doesn't want to lose his creature. Ultimate Price is going to take care of Eidolon. It's going to be two damage dealt. Three, actually. Uh, Hawkins had to use the oh, Manicon funds. Okay. Yeah. There's a Sandstep Citadel on the passing of the turn. Avery will draw. Another copy of Stoke the Flames. There's another copy of Eidolon in hand, so it looks like he's going to deploy that. And it's reminiscent of last game where it's just Bramaz, Bramaz, Bramaz for Merrick. I mean, Bramas is a very, very good card against Red X, no doubt. You definitely have to get that thing off the table. And after sideboard, when you have Stokes and you have Roast, you do have answers to that card. Well, now is the worry, though, is Hawkins has untapped mana. So say if Avery Williams just convokes up Stoke the Flames and tries to kill Bramas, we've already seen from game one that Eric has a couple cards that can put 1-1 one -one counters on his creatures. If Avery goes for Stoke on Bramas, and Hawkins has... Dramoka's Command or Ob's on Charm, that is going to be the game. Yeah. A couple copies of Stoke in hand for Avery. Also has a copy of Atarka's Command right now, but he's having some mana issues at this point. Hawkins does have a copy of Death Miss Raptor in hand. Well, it just never... It seemed like the lifespan on his cards to deal damage just was very short. The Zergo got in for two and... Okay, he pushed it in for four with the Lightning Strike, but that was it. Yeah, no, the lifespan on these cards is pretty short. Again, this is why I, I'm just not a very big fan of Zergo against Obson decks. It just gets outclassed so fast because their cards are so much better than yours that you have to work trades as best you can. As here's a face down morph, it could be anything, but uh, I'm fairly sure it's a Death Miss Raptor. There's an Eidolon trigger. Well, so what would be the. Uh, why would. If, it's, if it is Death Miss Raptor, why would he play it face down? Not sure. Not sure. Uh, this is what, what's actually interesting about this game is that Avery might be able to still steal this game because he has two Stokes in hand. He can cast one, put Hawkins on a six, cast another one, put him down to two next turn. So if he peels a land, he can play Stoke, Stoke, and then a Tarkus man be able to win this game. Now, not entirely sure the rest of the contents of his hand, but I, I'm. I'm positive, excuse me, that there's double stoke in a Tarkus command. If he has a card like Hoarding Outburst, he's actually doing pretty good right now. So he has 11 points of burn. Yes. It's if he could actually get to cast the 11 points of burn. And keep in mind, the Stokes don't actually deal him damage. The Atarka's Command puts Avery at a virtual nine. And it may, I wonder, I hope it doesn't come back to him, the fact that he hasn't been blocking these tokens. Uh, he has taken some free damage from Hawkins right now. If he had just been putting Zergos in front of the cat tokens, there wouldn't, Bermaz would just be by himself right now. And with a pass there, I believe Avery is on the line you're talking about. Uh, burn spell's just going upstairs now. I think you have to try to burn him out because at, at this point, Eric can't cast another spell. Right. If, uh, so yeah, Avery has four damage this turn off a of Stoke. If he draws a land, he can go Stoke Atarka's Command to finish it off. Yep. But he needs to stay at three or higher to make this play possible. Correct. Takes seven, he goes, would go to four here. Four is enough. But at this point, you can't, you can't shift game plans. There's no killing of creatures anymore. That's right. off the table. Yeah, and you have to hope that Hawkins doesn't have a bunch of different things. Well, to say the least. Well, not a, actually, it's not even a bunch because if Hawkins, most of the spells Hawkins could cast here, make him take two, and then your two Stokes just win. Sure. I mean, at this point, you're not beating a Dromocus yeah. Command. Like you, you're incapable of beating that card. Well, that's not. Wait, wait. That's not even true. If it uh, right now, because he could cast a Stoke, draw a land, and cast another Stoke. No, if he just if he ca if if Avery casts Stoke the Flames. Eric should just Dromokas command it and take two instead of four. Oh, right. Oh, the mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dromokas command had... Right. It, yeah, just the mode eat a burn doesn't spell. Take, doesn't take damage. Yeah. Yeah, you can't beat that. So you can't beat Dromokas command at this point. Who is it? Ooh. Oh, wow. That's bad news, That boys. is... Hidden Dragon Slayer. Now, yes. there's nothing for it to kill, but it sure is a 3-2 lifelink. And that changes the equation... To say the least. By... Three. That I don't. That's huge. Oh, I don't that's, know if that's, Avery has that's, a line that's now. That's really good. The line of two Stokes and an Atarka's command is no longer lethal. Yeah, and I was, I was trying to see if he, if he just plays Atarka's command for the for the skull crack mode. If he can win, he has to take two to cast it. It'll put Hawkins down to seven, and then he doesn't have the ability to cast double Stoke the next turn. Wow. And we said that this card could matter. Yep. And boy, did it. Two main deck copies. Lifelink is very powerful against the red deck for obvious reasons. And this one, I mean, even from our side, we have the deck list, and that wasn't on our radar right yep. away. You're saying, 
you know, Death Mist Raptor, Den Protector. If it's a Raptor, why is it face down? Oh, now this makes sense. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be able to empty his hand fast enough now. And if Hawkins gains four life, this is just an absolute disaster. But if, if Avery has to go after creatures, it's an absolute disaster. Right, I mean, you feel, you feel like he has to stoke the Dragon Slayer here. Yeah, at this point, yeah. Which means he's not stoking Eric. The problem I have with the way that Avery has played this game is I think he, like, he's allowing what happened to him game one with the Bramas tokens and influence the way that he's playing this particular game with like the Jamoka Command plus one, plus one, eat your guy, Obzon Charm plus one, plus one, eat your guy. Like, like that's not how the games typically play out. You know, like, right. that was a unique right. scenario that happened. So he's just been letting these cat tokens actually do things that they consistently won't do. Right, they're just accruing on the board. There shouldn't, Vermont should be by himself. Yeah, he it should just have be a 3-4, yeah, out he there. He shouldn't have this pride of cats following him. Yeah. Now, there's, there's a land. All right, so he can stoke Andatarka's command in the same turn now. Yeah, but you feel like... Damage is adding up now. Yeah, but you feel like, I mean, this Eidolon is... Is no longer good for Avery. He's at a lower life total. You you feel like he has to stoke the Bramaz here. If he stokes Bramaz, I mean, he just doesn't have many spells left to work with. His own Eidolon is is a problem. Yeah, I mean, well, depending on Hawkins is at ten, Williams at six. There are there are obviously no good attacks here. So all that Avery can do is just pass the turn back. Well, if you if you have to stoke Bramaz, you he may do it now. Yeah, I mean, at this point, he could just tap four mana and do it now. Maybe, maybe throw in a convoke there potentially. At this point, I think I think what he actually needs to do is get his own uh, idol off of the table. What I think he's looking at doing is playing Goblin Rabble Master, making a token off it, and then convoking a kill spell at the Bramaz. Might be okay. He goes to four, but if you only have one or two. I mean, you have two spells left if you're Avery, right? You can cast Jamoka's Command and then one other thing. And Rabble Master is a good second card there. That's not a bad second card. It gets Air, it gets Hawkins' Bermaz off the table. It gets you a Rabble Master, which will eventually win the game for you if it's not kept in check. He's going to play Rabble Master here. He's going to go down to four. Yeah, I think I like this line from him. It's dangerous, but I think it may just work. Now, I am surprised he's letting it attack. Yeah, as am I. Uh, he could... That seems like he should just be convoking with it. I'll pass the turn back. So the plan here is to, the plan here is to convoke and take one. Yeah, convoke, leave back Eidolon, convoke, take one, go to three, kill Bermaz, hope. But, I mean, then you'd have a Rabble Master with two tokens next turn and an Atarka's Command you can still cast. I, you'd be at one, but I, you may be fine. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the plan here is, you know, Hawkins attacks with everything. He attacks with the Vermaz, gets another cat token. You put your three creatures in front of the three cat tokens, stoke the Vermaz, cross your fingers. I guess, and I'll go back, if Avery makes that play and goes to three, then Hawkins can swing two cat tokens, and Avery can only block one of them, and Avery goes to two and is now spelled out of the Yeah, game. he's spell locked. So there is some downside to that. Maybe that Avery deems that downside too large. Okay, so he wants the Eidolon off the board. If his hand is good enough, that makes sense. The Eidolon is hurting him more than it's hurting Hawkins right now. That's for sure. I mean, he's got to stop playing around cards like Obzon Charm and Jermoka's Command. He can't, play, he can't play around anything. Yeah. There's no playing around anything at this point. You need to hope that Eric Hawkins' hand is like all lands or bad spells or something. He can't beat anything. Like any spell that you mention, Jermoka's Command, Obzon Charm, I, yeah, well, Avery's been playing around them all game, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. I, 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 that needs to stop. Yeah, he can't beat any of that stuff. Now, how he opts to block will be interesting, because I, 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 I can understand wanting to try to get Eidolon off of the table at this point and putting it in front of Bermaz. But at the same time, I can also see just saying, okay, block all three of your cats with my three creatures, stoke the Bermaz, hope you have nothing. But he can't beat anything at this point either, anyway, so I think he just has to continue to hope he has nothing. 
see if Hawkins has anything for damage. I don't think so. I think he just passes. Here's the here's the convoke. Stoke goes upstairs. Hawkins down to six. So now six. So, despite a lot many opportunities, Williams has not ever gone after the Bermas. Um, and You're not a big fan of that. No, I think I mean, it's because it's still just going to be a problem now, right? Like well, that's, that's, that's yeah, yeah, that's not going to change. Unless Williams has two six points of burn in hand right now, if he has lightning strike with the Atarka's command, then this is great. He yeah. got the Eidolon off the board. You know, he'll win. He'll happen to win at the, right now. He can certainly peel one of those too. Take a draw step. Does he have six points? We know he has a Targus command. Yeah, we, know he has, we know he has command. Didn't get a great look at it. I don't think he just has all six right here. We know he has a Zerg on his hand. He's had a Zerg on his hand forever. Yeah, so he, he was hoping to peel a Lightning Strike or another command there. I think he got a Fetch Land instead. Has to ask, can he survive? Can he play in such a way that he gets one more look at a three mana burn spell? Gonna be tough. Especially with Manic Influence being one of the lands. Gonna be tough. Well, the big issue is I don't. He does. Bermaz is going to attack, and Anafenza is going to attack. And Avery will only have one blocker because Zergo, Zergo is too cowardly to block either of them. Yes. The goblin token is going to swing. Rabblemaster is the only available blocker, and both those creatures are lethal. And I, I suppose if he Atarka's commands to pump his team and deal three damage to Hawkins, Zergo goes up to a three power creature. No, no, no. It's, it's a creature. It's creatures with power two or less. It's yeah, not it doesn't, yeah, it's not, doesn't, doesn't change anything. It's not Zergo's not yeah. creatures with power less than yeah. him, greater Zer than Zer him. Zergo gets to block a one power creature. That's okay, it. so there's no way to turn Zergo into a blocker here. I don't, I don't see how he stops the Anafenza and the Bramas. So I think that's the, that's the problem here. I got too into the flavor. Thing. Maybe Zergo's flavor, he won't fight bigger things. No, 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 he just won't fight things. Big he, too. Just, he just fights small things. He, he likes to fight. He, he picks on the small things. Rabblemaster's going to make a token. Looks like Zergo and the Goblin token are, come, are going to come into the red zone, as will Goblin Rabblemaster. This is kind of a... Uh, Swing, Last hurrah. Yeah, he's gonna swing the team and hope that Eric plays this wrong. Yeah. But I have to imagine that Atarka's command's on Eric's mind. It's the card that should be at the forefront of your mind at this point. When you play against Atarka Red, you should always be thinking about Atarka's command. It is one of the ways they steal games frequently. Just an obscenely powerful card. There's a block. The block here. If, if Avery pumps his team with the Tarkas command, the Brahmas will still live yep. and will attack back for lethal. So this shouldn't be good enough. Here's the command. Imagine it's three to Hawkins and pump the team. That will force the Rabble Master and Offensa trade. The Goblin token will win. Zergo will die. Now, I don't know if Hawkins made a goblin token when he blocked with Bermaz, or a soul cat when he blocked with Bermaz. I don't believe he did, but I don't, also don't oh, no, believe the it the damage. The damage just goes to the, to the oh, token. Oh, yeah, it just goes to the token, yeah. yeah. But I don't, also don't believe it matters. Well, it certainly doesn't matter now because of Jamoka's command. Not that Bermaz can be blocked by Zergo, but it certainly didn't matter at this point. There's an attack, and that's going to do it. Eric Hawkins is going to win this match here over Avery Williams, two game to zero. Abazon Company will take care of Atarka Red pretty clean fashion. Even though Hawkins' draw, especially game one, was very painful, Williams' draw did not come together all that well. And Hawkins is going to move on to 9-2 and two now with his brew. Yeah, 2-0 and oh today. And actually, if you look at the end there, it, it did seem like Hawkins was sitting on Adramoka's command. So even if, if we go back to those lines where Avery maybe had lethal burn, I don't know if any of them work because Hawkins does have the Dramoka's command to not take damage off burn spells. A pretty nice safety net to yeah. have Dramoka's command and never having to cast it. Hidden Dragon Slayer, pretty tough too. The Unmegamorph there changed pretty much the entire dynamic of the game and what Hawkins was trying, or excuse me, what Williams was trying to set up. That was the big play, is that yep. when his morph was hidden Dragon Slayer, all of a sudden Avery had to, had to really shift gears and wasn't able to do it. Yeah, a lifelinker is really tough for a red deck to be.